This book is called The Korean Cinderella. It was written by Shirley Klimo and it was illustrated by Ruth Heller. Shirley Klimo and Ruth Heller relied on their Korean friends and their own travels to Korea to help blend three different versions of this fairy tale into this particular story, the Korean Cinderella. Long ago in Korea, when magical creatures were as common as cabbages, there lived an old gentleman and his wife. For years they longed for a child to share their tile-roofed cottage. At last a daughter was born. Good fortune, the old man exclaimed. I'll plant a pear tree in the courtyard to celebrate this day. And Pear Blossom will be our daughter's name, the old woman added. Both the tree and the child grew lovelier with each passing season. In spring, white flowers frosted the tree, and Pear Blossom wore a white ribbon on her long black braid. In summer, when the tree bent with ripening fruit, Pear Blossom's mother wove a into her hair. In the autumn, when leaves from the tree blew about the courtyard like scraps of sunshine, her mother dressed Pear Blossom in a yellow gown. But one winter day, when the branches on the pear tree were still bare sticks, the old woman died. I go, wailed the old man. Who will tend Pear Blossom now? He put on his tall horsehair hat and went to the village matchmaker. She knew of a widow with a daughter. The girl, named Peony, was just the age of Pear Blossom. Three in one, promised the matchmaker, a wife for you and a mother and a sister for Pear Blossom. So the old gentleman took the widow for his wife. Although Pear Blossom called the woman Almani, or mother, she was far from motherly, and Peony was worse than no sister at all. Almani found fault as soon as she stepped into the kitchen. Too cold, she grumbled. The fire's gone out. Fetch wood, Pear Blossom. Be quick. Pear Blossom gathered sticks and fed the stove until the lid on the kettle danced from steam. Oh, too hot, her stepmother scolded her. The noodles are scorching. Get water, Pear Blossom. Be quick. But all money and peony were jealous of Pear Blossom, and the harder she worked, the happier they were. Each day, Pear Blossom was up before hay, the sun. She cooked and cleaned until midnight, with only the crickets for company. She cooked and cleaned until midnight with only the crickets for company. Each year was worse than the one before, for her father grew too feeble to pay attention to Pear Blossom's troubles. Amani dressed Pear Blossom in rags and tied her shiny braid with a twist of rope. And now she and Peony addressed her only as Little pig, or bigling as a big tail, jeered Peony. But nothing could hide Pear Blossom's beauty. At night, Almani lay sleepless, searching for an excuse to get rid of her stepdaughter. One morning, she told Pear Blossom, The water jar by the door needs filling. It leaks, Almani, Pear Blossom replied for it has a hole the size of an onion. Stubborn little pigs get tied up and taken to market, warned her stepmother. Fill that jar. Then Almani and Peony marched through the courtyard gate, locking it behind them. Pear Blossom leaned against the tall jar. 
Will none in this world help me? she asked. Jungle, rumbled a hoarse voice. Oh, Togabi, Bear Blossom gasped. A, a, a goblin. What if a Togabi goblin were hiding in the jar? Fearfully, she stood on tiptoe and peered inside. A gigantic frog with bulging eyes stared back. Jungle, it croaked again and squeezed itself like a stopper into the hole of the jar. As you wish, agreed Pear Blossom, for, frog or goblin, it was best to do its bidding. She hurried to the well and drew a jugful of water. When she poured it into the jar, not a drop leaked. When Omani and Peony returned, they found Pear Blossom resting beside the jar. So, Almani shrilled, off to market, little pig. But Almani, the jar is full, Pear Blossom protested. A frog helped me. <gasps> Trickery, snapped her stepmother. But she muttered to Peony, a magic frog? Look inside that jar. Peony saw huh, only her own scowling face. All of a sudden, the jar tipped a flood of water soaked Peony from head to toes. Piglings to blame, she howled. Someday little pig will get what she deserves, all money declared. She made Pear Blossom crawl through the puddles, licking up the water. The next morning, all money scattered a huge sack of rice around the courtyard. Call this rice, little pig, she ordered. Polish every grain, or else, she shook the empty bag, you'll be put in the sack and sent to China. Then Almani and Peony left for the village. Rice covered the ground like sand beside the sea. Pear Blossom threw her arms around the pear tree and asked, Will none in this world help me? Wings whirred overhead and a flock of sparrows flew out of the tree. Cheer, 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 the sparrows called to Pear Blossom. They pecked at the rice, separating husk from kernel. In a matter of minutes, the sparrows had polished the rice and piled it in a corner. When Omani came back, she found Pear Blossom nodding beneath the tree. Off to China, her stepmother began, and then caught sight of the mound of rice. How can this be? she demanded. Pear Blossom rubbed her eyes. Sparrows flew out of the tree and polished the rice. Birds don't hull rice, scoffed Almani. They eat it. But to Peony, she whispered, It's magic that's flying about. Catch some. She pushed Peony beneath the pear tree. At once the cloud of sparrows swooped down. <laughs> cheat, cheat, <coughs> cheat! They chattered at Peony. They pecked at her, tearing her jacket. They perched on her head, pulling her hair. Ah, piglings to blame, Peony bawled. Someday little pig will get what she deserves, all money threatened. She did not give Pear Blossom anything to eat, not that day or the next, not so much as a kernel of rice. Pear Blossom had food to fix, nevertheless. The village was having a festival, and she had to pack picnic campers of dried fish and pickled cabbage for her stepmother. She also sewed a dress of pink silk for her stepsister. When festival day came, Peony mocked Pear Blossom, calling her Dirty Piglet, stay at home. Piglin may go, said Almani, in a voice as sweet as barley sugar, after she weeds the rice patties. She handed Pear Blossom a basket of wilted turnip tops. Here is Piglin's picnic. I am most grateful, Honorable Mother, 
said Pear Blossom. When she reached the fields, Pear Blossom dropped the basket in dismay. Rice rippled like a great green lake all before her. Weeding it would take weeks. Who could do such a task? she asked. Suddenly a whirlwind twisted through the fields and a huge black ox reared up from a cloud of dust. Whoa! it bellowed, tossing its great horns. The ox began to munch the weeds, moving through the rows of rice faster than the wind itself. Each mouthful brought it closer to Pear Blossom. Even though she hid her face in her hands, she heard the crunch of its teeth and felt the beast's warm breath on her neck. Even though she hid her face in her hands, she heard the crunch of its teeth and felt the beast's warm breath on her neck. At last she dared to peek between her fingers. Both ox and weeds were gone. Hoofprints, big as cartwheels, popped the field, yet not a single blade of rice was trampled, and when Pear Blossom looked in her basket, she found fruit and honey candy instead of turnips. She bowed, then cupped her hands and called, A thousand thanks! Pear Blossom hastened to the village festival. The road, which followed a crooked stream, was rough with pebbles. Pear Blossom had just slipped off one straw sandal to shake out a stone when she heard a shout. Make way, make way for the magistrate. Four bearers, a palanquin swaying on poles across their shoulders, jogged toward her. In the chair sat a young nobleman, dressed in rich robes and wearing a jade jewel in his top knot. Flustered, Pear Blossom teetered on one leg like a crane, holding her straw sandal. Her cheeks grew hot as red peppers, and she hopped behind a willow tree that grew beside the stream. As she did, her sandal splashed into the water and bobbed like a small boat just out of reach. Stop! commanded the magistrate from his palanquin. He was calling to his bears, but Pear Blossom thought he was shouting at her, and, frightened, she fled down the road. The magistrate gazed after Pear Blossom, struck by her beauty, and he ordered his man to fish her sandal from the stream and to carry him back to the village. At the festival, Pear Blossom forgot about her missing shoe. She watched the acrobats and tightrope walkers until she was dizzy. She listened to the flutes and drums until her ears rang. She nibbled on treats until her basket was almost empty. She listened to the flutes and drums until her ears rang. She was peeling the last orange when Omani and Peony came upon her. Little pig, screamed her stepmother, what are you doing here? I am here because a great black ox ate all the weeds in the rice paddies, said Pear Blossom, the same ox that gave me this orange. Black Almani snorted. Oxen are brown. You stole that fruit. She was interrupted by the magistrate's bearers. Hear this, they shouted as they elbowed the palanquin through the crowd. We seek the girl with one shoe. It's Pigling! Peony pointed at her sister. She's lost her shoe. The bears put the chair down beside Pear Blossom, and the nobleman held up the straw sandal. The magistrate has come to arrest you for stealing. Omani shook Pear Blossom. Now you'll get what you deserve. Then she must deserve me as her husband, said the magistrate for this lucky shoe has led me to her. 
Another of Piglin's magic tricks, hissed Almoni, pulling Peony to the palanquin. My daughter will give you two shoes. That is twice as lucky. The magistrate looked at Almoni as if she had lost her wits. Then he turned to Pear Blossom and said, I've luck enough if she who wears this one becomes my bride. Pear Blossom smiled, too shy to speak, and slipped the sandal on her foot. Almani stood staring, stiff as a clay statue, but Peony ran straight to the rice fields to find the magic ox. All she saw was a glimpse of its hooves as it galloped away. When springtime came, the magistrate sent a go-between to Pear Blossom's old father to arrange a grand marriage. Pear Blossom's wedding slippers were of silk, and in the courtyard of her splendid new house, a dozen pear trees bloomed. Ihwa, Ihwa, chirped the sparrows in the branches. Ihwa, croaked the giant frog down below. That is as it was long ago, and as it should be, for in Korea, Ihwa means pear blossom. They had a grand marriage. The end. The author Shirley Climo and the illustrator Ruth Heller give us notes here about all of the research they did to make this book as authentic and interesting as they could make it for young learners. They do not pretend to be Korean um, experts, but they traveled and they studied and they researched to create this book. Both of these creators are from Northern California. You can see Shirley Klimo's picture on top and Ruth Heller's picture on the bottom. And they cooperated uh, with great joy in making this book about Pear Blossom. This very well-known and well-loved story, which is a long-ago story with a happy ending, is called The Korean Cinderella, written by Shirley Klimo, illustrated by Ruth Heller.